Hi, it's Jan Beta, and this is one of the most amazing donations I ever got for the channel. To the initiated eye, it is of course very obvious that this is a Commodore Amiga 4000, the 030 variant, which has a 68030 processor. I haven't looked inside yet. Supposedly there is some back battery leakage and some capacitor leakage going on in there. It doesn't start up correctly, so we are going to have to do some repairs. This has been donated by Katrina and I want to thank you so very much. This is amazing and I hope I can make this work. Yeah, let's look inside and see how much damage there actually is. Did I say thank you yet? I think so. <laughs> thank you. So we are going to take the screws out. And then I suppose... Yep, that just lifts off. Okay, there we go. And yeah, there is some corrosion going on, but it's very much limited to this little spot here, which is good. This is where the battery originally sits. Seems somebody had a replacement battery in there. There's wires coming from here, presumably. I see some dull pads everywhere. So I think the battery leakage actually mostly is here. There are some leaky capacitors on here. You can see the dull pads on this one. And yeah, basically in this whole area you can see very dull pads on this surface mount electrolytic capacitors and also on the other components surrounding them. There has been capacitor leakage and I'm going to have to clean that up and I'm going to replace all the capacitors. I'm going to clean up the battery leakage, of course, as well. That's the first thing I want to do because that's more uh, aggressive, I think, than the capacitor leakage. So before I do anything else, I just want to get this board out. I have to take all the drives out, I think. This has two disk drives and I think this, these are two HD disk drives as opposed to most of the Amigas that had double density drives. These have high density drives with the little quirk that the high density uh, disks are read with around half the speed. I don't quite remember why that was, but Commodore, uh, yeah, I think they, they just cut some cost with the controllers or something. So they had high density floppy disks, but they weren't very useful because they were too slow. Let's take out all the screws. Yeah, we basically have to take this whole thing apart, I guess. We have to take this out here. And we have these screws. We should probably be able to take this off. Yep, should take out the hard disk. <laughs> so this should lift out. Oh, okay, I see. So this is a, a daughter board that uh, holds the Zorro slots. It's pretty interesting construction, actually, because it is, uh, there's no processor on the board itself. It is on a daughter card. This should just lift out, I guess. Yep, it does. Oh, and there's some corrosion even in these connectors here. Card looks fine. We're definitely going to have some work, some work to do on this one. You see that little green speck there? That's corroded. There's a corroded pin in there. Hope it's not that bad. Worst case, we're going to have to replace the whole connector here. This cable we should remove. This is the disk drive cable, which connects both the disk drives. This here is the power connector and it's uh, shaped so you can't get it in the wrong way. So it turns out I have to take this whole bracket off to get to a screw that holds the mainboard in place. But this should just be one screw. And it's just clipped in on the other side, so this should now come off. Yes, it does. Okay. And now we can get to this screw there. There's the screw. And yeah, I think we have to get the... This is the processor board. Should get that out. 
Yes. And there's another screw. And we have another screw there, so we have to get the uh, CD-ROM drive out of the way. We have to get the CD-ROM drive out of the way anyway. Yeah, I think unfortunately we have to take this whole assembly out where the CD-ROM or DVD-ROM in this case sits in and the two drives sits in because there's another screw on the mainboard there. And I think the way to do that, because it's screwed in, yeah, the face plate, I think we have to take this plastic uh, face plate off to get to the screws there. And this is just clipped in, I think. So this is clipped in with these, uh, I don't know, mouth-like clips. So we have to push them together and get it out there. And have to do that for six, seven, I think seven at the same time. So that's gonna be a fun little exercise. That wasn't too bad. Yeah, it was really <laughs> pretty bad. And, but I managed to not break anything, I think. I'll take a picture of how these uh, wires connect. It's always a good thing. And then I'll take them off. Yay, we're free. <laughs> so yeah, now there's one screw that we have to remove, I think, and then we can take the whole assembly out here. I hope. Oh, there's another one here. Yeah, something's coming loose there. Yeah, this is all loose now and it actually comes apart towards the front. Okay, get the power supply connections out there. Aha, uh -huh. okay. Very cool, real power switch, by the way. <laughs> it actually cuts the power and it's, it has this long plastic rod. Probably I should put that somewhere safe so I don't break it. So now we can probably get the last screw out and then we have to remove two screws on the back side, I think, and then we should be free. And if I'm not mistaken, all we have to take out now are these two screws. The screws on the serial are still attached there. Okay, let's try to lift the board out. I think this should now be loose in there. Okay, there we go. There's an insulating sheet on the bottom there. Okay, I'm going to put the case parts away for now. Okay, I think actually the very first thing I want to do is to remove these loose wires here because they... Ah, uh, yeah, it's not very well done. <laughs> I'm just gonna get rid of those. Unfortunately, the corrosion has eaten through the board and is uh, on the back side here in some spots. This should be absolutely repairable, I think. For those of you interested in this, this is actually an A4000 Rev-B from 1992. I suppose this machine probably was made in 93. This is the date code on the chip here. And yeah, most of the date codes are from late 93. So probably that's when this was produced. It already has the Revision 11 Super Buster in there. Uh, previous versions of this chip, the Buster um, is responsible for the Zorro slots, uh, the bus controls and things like that. Uh, previous versions of this had issues uh, when people were actually using the newly introduced DMA controls for the uh, Zorro buses. And uh, this one shouldn't give us any issues if the machine works at all, that is, of course. <laughs> okay, just starting up the soldering iron here. Yeah, the corrosion doesn't look too bad. Some of the capacitor corrosion looks pretty bad, but it's... Yeah, it doesn't seem to be, there doesn't seem to be too much damage. Some of it, some of the battery leakage seems to have gotten in these sockets here. But even that doesn't look that bad, actually. Wow, this is some terrible work. Ooh, yuck. And it smells terrible, too. 
whatever the soda was that they used. Ooh. Oh, it smells like vinegar. Somebody was in there with, with vinegar already, I guess. And somebody was in there with vinegar and maybe didn't remove the vinegar. Which then causes more corrosion instead of cleaning up the old corrosion. Or it cleans up the old corrosion and then causes new corrosion by the vinegar. <laughs> I think I, I want to um, get some isopropanol on there and see how much of the corrosion I can get off with that. So, yeah, here you can probably see the little green spots here. Some of the traces and some of the vias and things like that. Uh, that's corrosion on the back side of the board. I'm just going to use a brush and some IPA and see uh, if we can get the corrosion from the back side of the board completely off. But it already looks a lot better, okay. Let's see. I want to remove the, the ram for now. The little clips tend to break off. I'm going to be extremely careful and try my best. I think this is four megabytes of RAM, which can, of course, be uh, expanded. Okay, these don't look too bad. It actually looks pretty good. I'm just going to let this soak. I guess somebody, the, I, maybe the corrosion even is caused by the vinegar in this case. Uh, unfortunately, there's quite some blue stuff below this connector here, and probably in the connector. Yeah, this stuff's pretty nasty. We should definitely put some vinegar on there and uh, let it soak for a while. So I have cleaned this up with some alcohol and some circuit board cleaner. It's just a, a generic electro electronics cleaner. And yeah, it's, it's better but I still have some green spots which are corroded. It's definitely better, but I'm going to still put some white vinegar on there. I'm going to be very careful and just put it on here. And yeah, this is just standard white vinegar, 5% uh, acidic. Just got it from the kitchen and I'm just going to use a tiny amount of this and put it on there with a toothbrush, I think, and with uh, some Q-tips. And the important thing is uh, you have to rinse it very carefully afterwards because you don't want vinegar to stay on there. That's basically doing the same thing to the contacts and the circuit board uh, that the battery liquid does. Going to put some on here as well. Just in case. But the rest of the area looks pretty clean already. Yeah, and now I let it uh, sit here for a couple of minutes, I think. And then thoroughly remove the vinegar. And then our battery leakage should be neutralized and we can uh, continue to clean the area with alcohol and like uh, electronics cleaner and the things I used before. First rinsing it with water and definitely have to replace the little uh, SMD electrolytic capacitors. They seem to have all leaked. They all have like the, the contacts should be shiny and they're all dull. So all of them must go. So, it's about half an hour later. Let's see if some of the crust comes off. Yeah, I think so. Some of it is coming off, so that's good. I have to scrub this a bit. Probably we have to uh, re-solder some of it as well. So remove all the old solder that's pretty corroded and uh, clean the components. Yeah, probably it's a good idea to desolder all these chips. I'm going to have to desolder the electrolytic capacitors anyway and uh, remove 
the remaining corrosion or even replace the components. But for now I'm just going to clean this up really really thoroughly using water and uh, then some IPA, maybe some water again, maybe some IPA again and my uh, electronics cleaner and yeah just to get rid of every little bit of vinegar because as I said that's going to eat the circuit board uh, just as much as the battery leakage. So I have rinsed this a couple of times, uh, distilled water, isopropanol and my contact cleaner and now I'm just letting this dry. And I used the contact cleaner stuff last because that evaporates uh, pretty quickly. So my hope is that that cleans up uh, everything and then evaporates. And yeah, the back side of the board. I put some there too. And yeah, I've opened the window. <laughs> so hopefully uh, this is just going to evaporate. And uh, this is as clean as we can get it for now. As I said, probably a good idea to replace some of the components and to uh, re-solder some at least. But for now, this is about as clean as we can get this, I think. So I'm going to let this dry and see where we get. So yeah, I got it all cleaned up and I'm definitely going to have to do some more work and desolder the chips and replace them eventually. Uh, some of the pins actually corroded through and the pads are also gone on this one in particular. Um, I think most of these are only for the real-time clock and yeah most of these pins that are badly corroded are not connected anyway so we could get away with this I'm still going to have to remove the chips and remove this little resistors and get replacement parts for that um, this chip here is pretty important because uh, it handled some of the connections to the RAM, actually. That looks pretty good, except for these vias in front of it here. And yeah, probably I'm going to remove the solder from those and uh, add new solder and be pretty careful because uh, the vias actually connect the top side of the board to the bottom side of the board and they, are, they should be connected through. Didn't do any measurements yet so yeah what I want to try actually is to power this up I'm actually pretty eager to try this out I don't know about you there's basically nothing much that can go wrong I, I removed uh, the corrosion so the corrosion it shouldn't uh, corrode any further now um, dried everything thoroughly got off the vinegar, got the power supply here. We need to populate the first uh, RAM bank, I think, uh, bank zero, which is used for the chip RAM. So we are going to put one in there. Yeah, just I kind of want to see what it does. I don't think this is going to work like this in this state, but maybe, maybe it's even going to boot up. I put the processor board in there again. I'm going to connect the power supply okay I, I, let's just try this nothing much that can go wrong probably these power supplies are not as dangerous as some other older power supplies this is a relatively modern switching power supply and it should at least not put out any over voltage so we are going to be fine with that I guess and uh, Katrina, who donated this, also had this powered up uh, without removing the 
crud <laughs> and it at least booted up to a green screen so my hopes are quite high that it's at least going to do that okay yeah let's plug it in and see what it does actually okay uh cross your fingers i got a uh, power hooked up i got my upscaler hooked up here to the monitor port let's power it on and see what it does Okay, and we at least get a gray screen. That's something, I suppose. And that's about it. <laughs> yeah, that's it, I guess. So I have now removed the RAM completely. So this should at least give me an indication of whether the processor board works, uh, the processor and the kickstart ROMs. Uh, yeah, let's see what it does. If it gives me a green screen, it should mean that the diagnostics, the power on test actually is running from the ROMs and the processor is running. Yeah, and that's exactly what it does. Okay, so we seem to have a problem with the RAM slots here, or with some of the traces in this area. Surprise! And the processor seems to run fine, the ROMs seem to run fine, the graphics output seems to run fine. So there is a lot of hope for this. <laughs> but it's going to be a significant amount of work. I'm going to have to replace this stuff here and check the connections between the ICs. And I think I also want to at least replace the first one here because I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this, but this little the thing that grabs the RAM is broken off on this one. The other ones are fine. But yeah, that's not going to make good contact, I guess. Maybe it's just that even, but I'm going to have to replace these. Yeah, I just decided that I want to reflow some of the vias and such in this area and see if that actually does anything. I don't have the capacitors yet. That's very likely a problem too and I definitely want to order some of these. Yeah, these don't take solar at all basically. That's pretty bad. It is pretty bad. So I got all the replacement parts in from Mauser. And I also found these uh, RAM sockets that I'm going to replace altogether, but I'm going to start to desolder some of the surface mount chips and hopefully that is going to work. Um, I'm just using hot air. Usually with contacts as corroded as this, you are going to have problems with desoldering because uh, yeah, it's not easy to melt the solder below the corrosion. So let's try, let's try. I'm just going to, um, I think I'm going to use some Kapton tape, tape off some components. I don't want to desolder and just, I'm going with these, this and this resistor pack. I also bought a replacement for primarily these chips here. I'm just going to uh, desolder everything I can. Okay, that went relatively well, but the board, as you can see, is pretty destroyed and I can smell some fishy electrolytes, so we are going to have to 
replace all the surface mount electrolytic capacitors. Um, the fishy smell when the le electrolyte gets heated up is an indicator for leakage. Yeah, and as you can see, the board is pretty damaged, unfortunately. We are going to try to clean that up as much as we can. Let's see how much of the pads survived. So I'm now going to use uh, the traditional desoldering station to desolder the resistor pack. Well, there we go. Yeah, I am going to have to scrub this whole area with a fiberglass pen to get rid of the remaining corrosion here. Uh, I want to remove this header and I want to remove the uh, surface mount capacitors in this area as well, so I can get everywhere. Yeah, good thing I removed this one. Uh, this is actually the underside of the chip, so there's quite some corrosion going on under the chip there. Uh, yeah. And here's what the circuit board looks like now. It is not pretty. <laughs> I'm cleaning up the board with a soda wig and also with some added flux and some IPA. Just using a combination of those basically and trying to get as much corrosion off there as I can. Some of the pads are really badly corroded, but I think most of them can be saved. Yeah, after a lot of tedious work, I hope this wasn't too boring. This is what we ended up with at this point. 
And actually, in the meantime, I have worked on this on and off for, I think, about a year. And I made some progress, but I decided to split the video into a number of parts because there's so much material that I could barely fit this into a digestible time frame. So there's going to be at least one other part that I've already nearly finished shooting. And I hope to see you again for that next part. That's probably going to be the video next week, if I can finish the repair, maybe. I have high hopes that I can fix it. There were some unexpected plot twists, <laughs> but you're going to see in the next video. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for your donations on Patreon and on the channel memberships page and your single donations. Also, of course, for your thumbs up, your comments and your subscriptions. So that's it for today. I hope to see you again on this channel sometime, maybe even for the next part of this repair. I'm Jan Beta. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.